Um, one is very simple. What is the meaning of the middle nation that you, um, the, in the example that you used? And secondly, if the Quran was so convincing for its literary merit, why did not the Arabs of Mecca at that time become convinced? Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, middle nation. Uh, the middle nation is addressed from many a point of view. Uh, it is, w one way it's addressed by uh, scholars is that the nations before us went one of two ways. One became extreme in terms of a, pers uh, a spiritual pursuit, and the other became extreme in an intellectual pursuit, and their hearts became hard, and we are a nation that has the balance between the spiritual and the practical and the, the intellectual rather. So we combine both and the Quran by the way is an incredibly spiritual document at the same time an incredibly intellectual document. It fuses those two things together and finds the middle path. The other uh, thing that's mentioned is that there are two extremes and I'll boil this down like a 30 second answer style thing. Okay, There are two problems with people who uh, come into contact with revelation. You have people that know what they're supposed to do and don't do it anyway. You got that kind of people, and you've got the kind of people who think they're doing what they're supposed to, but they have no idea what they're doing. Or they have no idea whether what they're doing is correct or not. In other words, to boil it down even simpler, you have people of knowledge with no action, or you have people of action without no. knowledge. So you've got these two extremes. And then the middle path is the path that has the people that possess knowledge and then act upon it, not fi falling into either extreme, thus a middle nation. And there's much more discourse about that as well. Now the second question, if the Qur'an is so awesome, how come you still have non-believers? Uh, non and even in the Prophet's time, and he was probably the most, con actually not probably, absolutely the most convincing order as well. So you've got the most convincing document, the most convincing order, and they're still not convinced. So how do you explain that? Well, it's, the explanation of that is simple. You remember we said we don't want to turn this into a debate before? only a matter of appreciation. Let me tell you, the Muslim creed is that we are, human beings are not robots. You don't input data and I am ready to accept and you know. That's not how it works. That's not how human beings work. There is an intellectual component and what's the other component? A spiritual, a moral component. Now, there, you know, the Qur'an, its message is, by the way, if you study early Qur'an and the themes in the early revelations, they're entirely moral. They're entirely moral. Why are you unjust? Why do you kill the baby girl? Why do you do... And these were filthy practices of the ignorant times before, right? Why do you treat the, the other in such and such a way? Why do you kill unjustly, etc., etc., etc.? It questioned unjust practices. It questioned greed. It questioned, you know, taking advantage of orphans or poor people, etc., etc. It questioned those things. Meaning it brought about moral concerns. The Qur'an didn't begin by saying, listen, why don't you produce a surah like this? That's not the first revelation, by the way. And a lot of times Muslims don't know that, so you, you're standing up in a, you know, a, 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 a da, information booth, a da'wah booth, and somebody comes by, that's the Qur'an, yeah, you're not Muslim, hey, produce a surah. <laughs> He's like, what's a surah? <laughs> I don't, kafir, produce a surah, Go produce 10 surahs, you know. <laughs> it is, it is, <laughs> it's an unhealthy approach. The Qur'an is appealing to the moral, the moral, and when the moral is convinced, it solidifies it with the intellectual. Now the people that were not convinced of the message of the Qur'an, were not intellectually bankrupt necessarily, but it, it became very clear that they were what? Morally bankrupt. These were people that were not willing to give the orphan their due, or give women the share in inheritance, or let go of their power, and because of letting go of their power, they'd have to treat you know, the other equally, etc. And you read the narrations, the texts, the quotes, the famous quotes of those who rejected Islam, the, noble, the nobility of the Arabs who rejected Islam, and you read their rationale, they were not hiding it. They were saying it outright. Abu Lahab came out and said, Oh, so if I accept this religion, what happens? How am I treated? And the Prophet tells him, like, like an equal to everybody else. And he gets up and says, I'm going to be equal to these guys? Forget it. Arrogance. Arrogance. So you cannot take that out of the equation. Just because someone is convinced, doesn't mean they will expect. Except, by the way, the final comment on this? Abu Lahab, one of the worst enemies of Islam, by the way. The and the uncle of the messenger, and his neighbor. It's a nasty guy. <laughs> really bad guy. Anyway. I don't, you don't know the half of it really, I'm just a really bad guy, but anyway. So, what I want to give you is an example. You and your brother, your actual sibling, or your sister have a fight. And she knows you're right. She knows you're right. Does she accept? Not to your face anyway. I know she's right, but I hate her so much, I can't accept. You know, there's ego, anger, jealousy, pride, things get in the way of you accepting the truth. And that is no different for the original audience. So we shouldn't oversimplify that into thinking, 
They received the Quran and therefore they became Muslim. I'm going to stop my answer at that, inshallah.